I had some people ask me about the monster faces that I made and posted up in the Artmatic and Voyager Facebook page just recently, so I thought that um, I'd just um, take the opportunity to make some little tutorials and teach you how I did this, and also uh, to provide a, a basis for creating all kinds of things in, in Artmatic. It's a fairly simple system. It looks like it's complicated because you can see that there are a bunch of uh, compiled components in there, but it's it really isn't. It's just a, a simple uh, set of uh, building blocks. So uh, this uh, tutorial will assume that you know something about how to put uh, the trees together in Artmatic. Um, I'll try and explain what I'm doing as I go along, so hopefully it won't be so daunting that you, you won't give it a go. And uh, just thinking about it, it looks like probably it's going to be more than one video, I would think, because it is. there are many steps. It's, not, as I said, not complicated. There's just, there's just a, a number of different steps. Um, these, as I just mentioned, these are compiled components. So um, these uh, five at the top here are components that contain uh, other sets of components. They're like little containers. Um, you should know what those things are. If not, just have a look in the manual and uh, you'll, it'll describe in very much detail what those things do. But just to um, give you a look at what's going on here, I'll tell you that the tree is basically divided into three sections. and the components down here are mixer components, these two mixer components. So what's happening is you've got three main segments being mixed together. These two get mixed there and then it gets mixed with a further one there. Uh, the, these two compile trees which are at the top here are actually defining what happens to the whole group of these three below them. Generally what the what the story is, is the center one here is defining the top and the bottom of the face including these little horns and ears and things. So the main face structure. The left hand component here is just defining what happens with the eyes and that one is defining what happens with the mouth. I could probably have made this all in one big tree but I often just split trees into pieces just because it's easier if you ever come back to them to know what you were doing. In this case I wanted to put some sort of animation on the mouth as well. So I've kept the mouth separate uh, and keeping the eyes separate just means that, you know, I can work on the rest of the face and I know that the eyes are going to sort of pretty much stay the same. But let's have a look inside. Uh, we'll, we'll start with this component here. This one here is, as I said, is defining these parts, the face part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside here. Now I've, I've just selected it by clicking on it and then I'm going to type my E key on the keyboard and that will expand out this component so we can see what's inside it. You can see here that uh, again this is basically two streams going down here. One side is is the bottom of the of the face and the other side is the top of the face. This face is built upon this little gadget here which is a Gaussian dot. Now the Gaussian dot is a component that defines an area of lightness to darkness uh, and the, the equation causes that to happen as if it was a circle. So it's, it's really just a mathematical description of how light the area is and how dark the area is and how fast it gets from being light to dark. And it would normally appear as a circle, but in this case I've modulated it with things above it here. These are modulators which are changing the shapes of the circles. And down the bottom here I've used these, these little components to um, provide color. This is actually an RGB system. If, if you've got three outputs at the end of the tree, or more than three outputs, it's going to be an RGB tree, which means that the um, color lookup table here won't function. It doesn't do anything at all. And, and I generally work in RGB trees just because I have so much more control over what happens with the color. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back out to the top of this tree here now. So I've just typed the E key again. I can toggle between these two just by doing that. Uh, and I don't, what I'll do, I'll start from scratch so you can see exactly how I built this particular tree. So I don't need anything here at the moment. So I'm going to actually get rid of this entire tree. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go back to a basic scalar tree. And this, this is what I generally start with uh, if, I'm, if I'm building just a generic system. Um, because it's just a, it's a basic, you know, decent starting tree. I don't want, really don't want these tiles here. And this, this tile is actually going to become the top of the tree. Um, when, when you choose the basic scalar tree, this tile actually is not set to its nominal values. So I'm just going to reset it to nominal values here. The way that I did that then, by the way, is um, this is a trick that you probably find very useful. If you, if you hold down the control key, it doesn't matter where these sliders are in any of these um, tiles. If you 
hold down the control key and click anywhere it will reset them anywhere in the parameter definition bar it will reset everything to its nominal setup and that's normally not necessary when you create a tile because it will always appear at that nominal setup but in that particular case because I selected this basic scalar tree I, that first component is not set to its its nominal values so you just got to watch that if you use that tree um, now I need two streams on this tree and the way that I do that is uh, it's very simple I, I have a tile selected here selected tiles are always outlined in green and I'm just going to use this little key which gives me a little off the side tile it just does what it says it'll do I want two of them because I've got two streams so I'm going to just select that again and do that again so I've got two of these little doobers now I also like to keep my trees neat so what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting these and I'm using shift and the angle bracket key, the left angle bracket key, um, to move them across. And the reason I, I like to just operate with fairly neat trees because I find that trees can get very complicated and I and often when you're working on something you'll keep on adding components and adding components and you, you very soon forget what it is exactly that you're doing so it's a really good idea just in case you want to come back to this tree at any time is to just to keep things very neat and tidy and try and make it make sense to to your brain so that it doesn't confuse you okay so I've got these two these two little tiles here um, I actually as you recall I want a, a Gaussian dot so uh, a Gaussian dot is actually a two in one out tile so I'm just going to hold down my mouse key and I'm going to find the Gaussian dot here and I'm going to do the same here so I've got two of them because I want two one for the bottom of the face and one for the top of the face as I said before okay so <clears throat> I'm going to put a couple of components at the top of these these are components that will control space distortion of these components and I did that just by selecting the tile I wanted and then this little one which says put a component in above the one you've selected um, and I'm going to do another thing here which I like to do which is I'm just going to hit my C key on the keyboard and that uh, just collapses the tree a little bit so again it just keeps it a little neat so I can sort of follow what's going on now below these components I wanted to add some components to to change the colors as I mentioned before so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add another component to the bottom I did that by just pushing um, my number one key on the keyboard and it would it added a, a component with one output just a little trick I could also have done that by oh, I'll just undo that so I could just have selected it and just added that one which just says a little key which says add a component below it and would have done the same thing and uh, I'm going to have uh, another component beyond that one I'll do the same thing here again and this one I want to turn into a uh, three in three out component so once again I've just selected the control key and I'm choosing from this little menu three in three out these components now are going to be color components these are 3d scale components but in this part of the tree if I use them down here in this way they'll become little color mixes uh, which is exactly what I want and you will have seen straight away that suddenly that black and white tree zipped into color not exactly how we want it though it's kind of all over the place and the reason for that is that we, we haven't connected it properly at the top and it's just gone to its default connectors but we can fix that by this um, component down here is now selected and if I just hold the command key and hit the component above you notice it's now connected that little arm uh, it's only connected one so I have to do it again so now it's connected all three and we've gone back to black and white and that's because this is a color mixer it's a little RGB color mixer and I'll show you that that's red that's green and that's blue RGB but it's gone black and white because all these values have gone back to equal values so it gives you a white which is what you would expect we want to um, connect this one exactly the same way so once again I just select it hit the command key I just did that twice it connected all its little inputs to the output of that tile what I need to do now is to join these two streams together so I'm going to just put another component below each of these I just hit the three key then it gave me a component with three outs three ins and three outs but I actually don't want a three out component I want I want a one out component and I couldn't actually do that by hitting the one key that's you might have thought that was intuitive but I'll just delete those and I'll show you why if I hit the one key I'll actually get three 
one out components. And there are various reasons why that happens. It's a little complicated to go into here, so I won't. <laughs> but there's no problem. We just hit a three and a three. So we've joined a tile onto the bottom. And once again, just hitting the control key and putting our mouse down, we get the option to turn it into three and one out. And I want to do the same thing with that one. So these are identical. I'm just matching the two sides for the moment because I don't care about them being different. I just want them to be the same. And I want to turn this into a pack component. So this is this component packs the output of three channels, X, Y, Z, into one. In this case, it's going to pack them as RGB. Under some circumstances, I can join these up by um, just hitting the little joiner key here, but un unfortunately, uh, in this case, it doesn't doesn't really know what I want to do. And this will generally work if if you've got a tree and you've got several arms to the tree. Uh, you just hit that, and it'll it'll join it up in the best possible way it knows how, and it mostly always works. Sometimes it doesn't actually know what you're trying to do though, and this is one of those cases. So I have to do it manually. So I'll just create another tile at the bottom. I want this to be a two in three out tile because I want it to have two inputs from the two color streams and then three outs for the RGB. So I'm just going to hold down my little control key again and make this two in three out. It gives me a mixer component. That's exactly what I want. It didn't terminate it in the place I want it to though. So I, once again, I'm just going to hold down the command key and select that one and it's terminated it there. Let's neaten the tree up a bit. So now I have exactly what I wanted two parallel streams with Gaussian dots mixed together here at the bottom now. I know I know you're going to say, well, there's only one Gaussian dot. Well, the reason for that is that they're both occupying the same space at the moment because they've all been created at their nominal values. So what I'm going to do is just now move them apart. And to do that, I put in a scale and offset component here at the top. Anything that I put in above this uh, Gaussian circle here will now change the description of uh, of how that circle appears in the Cartesian plane. So it's just determining where its calculation is performed. So what I can do is I can obviously move these things now. Uh, the, with the scale and offset, it, it allows me to either make the circle bigger or smaller, or I can move it from uh, on, the, on the, the X or the Y plane. So you'll see straight away, there's your other circle behind it there. So at this stage, I'm going to move this circle up so that it's just above the other one. And on this side, I'll move the other one down so it's below it. So that's the top and the bottom half of the face. And you'll see straight away that it's kind of blurring together. And that's because the, the values in the, in the Gaussian uh, circle equation are actually overlapping. So they give you a sort of a nice blend of, of light and dark. We, we want that in this case. We could make it quite defined if we wanted to, but we'll keep it like that because we like it for this particular use. We want it to be sort of one shape. So it's nice that it blurs. And then um, the other thing that we can do is um, use the little color mixer here at the bottom that I've created and we can make top part a little green and the bottom part a little blue with a nice sort of variation between them thanks to our Gaussian equation. So that's um, that's basically the structure of the face. Oh yeah, the other thing that I want to do here is I don't want it to be too regular. So I'm going to put in this um, Perlin random function here. Th this is basically going to cause the, the Gaussian equations to be modulated by a noise function. Uh, and, and we want it to do that so that we can have something that's not too regular because the face has irregularity to it. So I'm just changing the phase of it slightly. This phase part which just talks to the components values in space and modulates them according to the noise function. And the noise function allows you to have various parameters. You can have amplitude which is just exactly how severe the noise is applied uh, and then frequency which is how much pretty much the frequency of the noise that's applied. At this stage um, We'll just leave that alone. Uh, we just want something that just gives it a bit of shape. I'm not going to fiddle with that too much. We'll come back to it in a little while. And you'll see that we, we now have exactly what we wanted. We wanted two uh, little dots, which are just offset from one another slightly. We've got some noise modulation to give them a bit of shape and some color. And that's what I wanted this central component to do. You will notice that this is kind of grossly asymmetrical at the moment. It's not like a face. A face has uh, you know, very pronounced bilateral symmetry. Um, but we'll come back to that in a minute because we don't want to uh, add the bilateral symmetry just at this stage. That'll be in the next part. So um, I might uh, 
Oh, there's one more thing we should do before we stop here. That is to turn it into a compile component because we, we want to do that. Now, there's a few ways we could do that. We could actually save it as a compile component, but what we're going to do instead is do a, something that you can now do in Artmatic, which makes this kind of thing very, very easy. Select the, the component at the top of your tree or the top of the part that you want to be a compile component because you can do this within a tree as well. And the bottom, and you'll see that. I just held the shift key down when I did that. I, sele I selected the top component. Let's just, I'll select the top component. Now holding the shift key down, I selected the bottom. You see it's red. And now I just simply type the N key for new compile component and I get one. And it's taken all of those things that I just had and put them inside that component. So toggling back and forth with the E key here to see what's inside that component. And so there we are, we have that central component pretty much the way that I had it in the monster face before. I do have one more component to add, but we'll go back to that in the next part of the tutorial.